Good morning, good afternoon, good riddance. I don't know, that, that was goodbye, actually. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Hello. That's what I was trying to go for. Hello, everybody. We're back here. New week, new episode. Just what's happening. Gotta get in the Christmas spirit somehow. So how we're gonna get in the Christmas spirit is by blasting some some heavy some heavy death metal uh some heavy death metal Christmas music. Shout out to Danny Warstop for the new track. Um if you guys don't know who Danny Warstop is, Lee Center Basking Alexandria. Um brought back the scream for a Christmas song. Um who was expecting that? I sure wasn't. I knew he was dropping a song. I knew it was gonna be like scary. I but, like like I didn't expect it to be heavy death metal so, like, let's just listen to this. If that, if that doesn't scream, if that doesn't scream like Christmas spirit, then I don't know what it is. Ebenezer Scrooge, what's up, my guy? What's up, family? We're back here on this Tuesday because I was busy yesterday, so we did not get to do an episode of this. Just a, just a long day in general, man. We just we just got after the day. Um, woke up. Um, had baseball, you know, that's just what we do around here. Grind season 24-7. Not really 24-7, more like five days a week, but <laughs> hey, whatever. Um, and then after that, uh, did some, I, uh, I cleaned my car, which, uh, if you guys know me, you guys know the Kegmobile, um, you know that the Kegmobile V1 and V2, whichever one you've ever been in, um, or heard of, they do not tend to be clean. So for me to, <clears throat> for me to go out of the way to clean my car, clean the Kegmobile, says a lot, um, I, I even I even took the took the floor mats out, spray like got like some like dish soap on them and then put the hose on them and scrubbed them, looking good, looking good. The Kingmobile V2 is looking good, and and I cleaned my truck and not my truck, my stepdad's truck, and like and, you know I'm pretty I was pretty proud because the floor mats and that were disgusting and like there was just like there was dirt everywhere just from like you know kids having sports or whatever you know kids get in the car kids are gross anyway. Um, so I cleaned the floor mats and then after the fact, you know, I text my stepdad, like, Hey, like, like, are you happy with how the car turned out? Like, cause I didn't tell him I was going to clean it, put $30 in gas in the truck and I, I cleaned the car, vacuumed it, you know, scrubbed the, the floor mats, you know, dusted off the dashboard, whatever you call it. Text him. I'm like, Hey, they text him this morning. Cause I did it yesterday. Cause I didn't see him after yesterday. Um, I was like, Hey, what do you think about the truck? He's like, didn't even notice, but thanks. I was like, what? Like, all right, I guess whoop de do. What do you do? All my all my good deeds go to waste, I guess. And then after that, um, it's official. Uh, we're inked, baby. Um, simple as that. Shout out to Brandon Pacamara for uh for getting the foreskin train going. Um, and Tats. Uh, so here we stand now. Now me and Pac, me and Pac are like brothers, kinda. You know, uh, got the four underground four foreskins, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, opening lyrics to uh, soak me in bleach by the Amity Affliction. Um. Shout out to the Amity Affliction, uh, some of the best lyrical bands of all time, or excuse me, one of the best lyrical bands of all time. Uh, it doesn't does get much better than them. Uh, it's the thing, it's the thing about music that you know. If you guys know me, you know you know I'm not into modern hip hop and rap. Uh, I just think that it's all fake, and I think that you know the stage the stage that music's at right now, especially in metal, it's real it's real lyrical based, and like me, I think that's a lot deeper than just like a, a sick beat. Like, sure, like, I mean, if there's a good song, if there's like a good song, like, I'll listen to it. Like, if it's got a good beat or something, like, I'll listen to it. I, I'm not going to hate on it. Hate from the outside. I'll hate from the inside. I'll, I'll hate on it. I'll tell you it sucks. I'm like, what are you listening to, dude? But then, you, you know, I just think that if it's a lyrical song, you know, it, it really, it means something. You get, like, if, the, if there's, like, something, if there's a song and you can, like, tell what it's saying and you, like, feel what it's saying, then that, like, that's as best as it's going to get. If you if you can relate to what it's saying, um, you know, that's the thing, and that's it. That's the thing that you know I found in a lot of people, because you know, I mean, I I obviously show, I obviously show people music sometimes. So like, I'll show people I'll, I'll show people music, and they'll be like, "Wow, it does actually a good song." Like, I didn't expect that. I'm like, "Yeah," because it related to you. Like, you understood. Like, because a lot of the music that people listen to nowadays doesn't relate to anything. Like nowadays, it just relates to just that's a sick beat. Whoop de do, cool, sick man. Hang hang loose, dog. And like it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make you feel anything. Just it sounds good, but it doesn't make you feel anything. Music's about feel. It's about feeling something. And honestly, like just, people just need to start doing that more. Uh, just my opinion. But what do I know? I'm not the smart one here. Not the I'm, the I'm the dumb one of the group. I'm not the smart one. So that's all I got for that. And then after I chilled with the boys a little bit, and then I actually fell asleep early. Fell asleep early for the first time. 
Uh, by early, I mean like 1.30. That's like the earliest I've fallen asleep in like probably a month. So shout out to myself for that. Woke up at 9.30 today. Woke up at 9.30 today. I forgot to set my alarms. Because I had baseball at noon. Um, forgot to set my alarms. And I was, but luckily for me, woke up at 9.30. For no reason. No reason. Last time I woke up at 9.30 unannounced. I don't even know. I don't know. Could, could not tell you a smidge of idea. But it works out good because I got to get up early tomorrow. So now, you know, by the end of the night, I'll be tired. Hopefully, I can get to bed around like 1. If I, if I can fall asleep at 1.30 again, man, dude, like fall asleep that early, man. Really, I, I was like, dang, I'm proud of myself. I was proud of myself for that. Proud of myself. So I woke up at 9.30, dude, 9.30. It, it's funny, too, because like, if I wake up before like 11 on my own, and I go upstairs, and I was like, what are you doing awake? W- 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 woke up at 9.30 today, walked upstairs. Why are you awake? I'm like, ah, I'm asking myself the same question. But anyway, here we stand. Um, one thing, well, let's just get into it. One thing that keeps me awake, um, especially when they're late fights, which these weren't, is good fights. Um, that's one thing that keeps me awake. I remember uh, the 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 Brandon Moreno, Davidson Figueroa fight. Uh, that that kept me awake for extra. I was exhausted. I was like falling asleep. Not not that the no, fights weren't exciting, but like I was just tired that night. And then that that fight. That fight happens, and like I, I was up for three more hours. I just got like a whole sudden another tank of engine, tank of energy. Shout out to Arnold Palmer. Got another tank of energy for no reason at all, and that's kind of what it's kind of what happened this week too. Great card this week. Let me pull up MMA Junkie, the best place in the world to find your fight news. They're always first, or even if they're not first, they're always like they always just do it. They, they always do it good. Let's pull up this card. Um, before we even get to that, shout out to Canelo Alvarez. If you don't think he's the number one pound for pound boxer in the world, get out of here. You don't know anything about boxing. Dude went up, fought a dude, what, like six, seven inches taller than him? Like, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I'm a big Canelo dude. Big Canelo dude. A Canelo's honestly my, excuse me, a Canelo is my favorite boxer in the world. But like, I'm like, ugh. Like, I mean, like, yeah, like, Canelo's the better boxer out of two, but like, that's a, that's a size difference. Especially in boxing, man, that's a size difference and a half. So I'm thinking like, ugh, like that's not that's not my favorite thing for him. But I mean, I think he'll win. He was still a heavy favorite, and he he did win dominantly, not even competitive. If you don't think Canelo's the number one pound for pound dude in the world, you don't know anything about boxing. I don't know much about boxing. I don't like boxing. I think it's all corrupt and all for money. People don't care about like it. Pe- people don't care about. Like boxing, and people just care about the checks that come with it. People in boxing don't fight somebody because of who they, because of you know who they're managed by, or or who promotes them, or what uh, or what company they're signed to. And it's absolute garbage, man. Absolute utter garbage. If you're if like that's why the UFC is sick. Because if if you're if you're at the top, you want to be a champion. You're not going to be a champion by beating these you know these unranked dudes. These these you know. These uh, number fifteen, the number twelve dudes. You know, you're beating the top three dudes to to get there, and then you gotta defend it against the top three dudes. That's why defending titles in the UFC is so hard. In boxing, man, there's like a billion titles for everything. There's a billion titles for every division. I can't even tell you how many divisions there are. I think Canelo's like a four, like a four division champ. Just keeps going up. Ah, I'll beat that dude. Whatever. Like that Calum Smith dude. That dude's not. That dude's not somebody you want to mess with. He was what twenty nine and zero or something six three, what hundred eighty pound? You know they fought at, jeez. And Canelo just goes out there and just utterly dominates him. How how you give a round to any to Cal Smith? I don't know. I hate boxing. Whatever, corrupt. Only thing I know is Canelo, number one pound for pound boxer. Then Terence Crawford, and then who cares? Anyway, let's get straight into the UFC, man. Um, I didn't get to watch the entire card. Watched a decent amount, um, but not too much. Uh, didn't watch the first. I didn't watch the prelims. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Did not watch the prelims. Um, looks pretty one sided though for Tefan and Chuki. Oh, J- 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 Jimmy Pickett lost. That's disappointing. Uh, Jimmy Flick won. Jillian Robertson. Uh, that's, a, that's some weird scorecards, man. 30 26, 30 26, 29 28. What fight are you guys watching? Excuse me. What fight are you guys watching that two judges give give a 30-26 and you give a 29-28? That's all. Like, if you, like, jeez. Figure it out, man. A lot of people hate hate on Darren Wynn. Um, 
but he beat Antonio Arroyo. Everybody says he's boring. I mean, whatever. He's short. He he is a wide dude. Like he is wide. Like he like that is the definition of a wide person. And Darren Wynn just goes out there and just takes you down and beat Antonio Arroyo. So Jari Eubanks didn't even know she was on this card. She lost his pointing. One person I do want to point out, um, do want to point out for this is Anthony Pettis. Um, Anthony Pettis, you know, with Dana White saying he's doing do he's gonna do cuts, whatever. Anthony Pettis was one of the dudes who I saw his name coming up in the schedule and I'm like, ugh. Like, I mean, like, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Anthony Pettis is a much better fighter than Alex Moreno. 100%. Not a doubt in my mind. But, like, Anthony Pettis is just at that stage in his career where it's just weird. Um, this was the last, this was the last fight in his contract. But, if we're being honest, I don't, I don't see him leaving. Not really. I don't see him joining his brother in Bellator. I, I, I hope he doesn't. Uh, I think Anthony Pettis, you know, is good, f- is good for the UFC. You know, he's a he's a legend in the WEC, legend in the UFC. Just keep him there. Just keep him, please, please, Dana White, keep this man. Um, you know, I mean, Anthony Pettis went out there and he looked good, man. That dude, like, sure, that first round was iffy, whatever. Did not look good that round. You know, I was like, oh, like this could be the end of Anthony Pettis. But then he went out there, won the won the next two decisively, and beat Alex Morono. Um, like, yeah, yeah, Alex Moreno's not a dude who, you know, you, you go home bragging about beating. Like, you're like, yeah, I beat him. whoop de doo But regardless of that, just Anthony Pettis being on a two-fight win streak with wins over Cowboy and Alex Moreno, that does a lot for, for his confidence, you know. Now, now, don't get me wrong. You know, Anthony Pettis will never be the lightweight champion again. Um, it's all due, it's with all due respect to the man. He's a legend of the game. You know, he, he's a top 15 dude, in my opinion. But... <laughs> Um, he just doesn't have that, that thing anymore. I, I don't even know how, how to put it. He doesn't even have, like, that thing anymore. And I'll pull up the rankings, because he said his next fight, that was, that fight was at 170, his next fight's gonna be at 155. Um, his next fight, he said, is. And so, honestly, <sighs> Anthony Pettis, Ally Quinta, Anthony Pettis, Kevin Lee, Anthony Pettis, Benil Dariush, Anthony Pettis, Gregor Gillespie. There, like there's a like there's a lot of you know ten through fifteen fights where if Anthony Pettis wants to be that dude still he was ranked twelve at one seventy just one um and then Michelle Pereira called him out don't don't do that please don't do that UFC don't do that um I hate Michelle Pereira love Anthony Pettis weird fight for both would just be really weird to watch all I have to say don't do that um but no there's a lot of fights at one fifty in the bottom ha- in the bottom half of the f- top fifteen. Who the UFC could do with Anthony Pettis? I'd love to see him versus Kevin Lee. You know, Kevin Lee, in my opinion, is one of those dudes who, although he's ranked 11, he is not good. He is not a top 11 dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I like. I'm sorry if I made you guys mad saying that. Kevin Lee's not a top 15 dude, even though he's ranked 11. And I think Anthony Pettis can, you know, build a, you know, start, you know, another part of his career. You know, I don't think he's ever going to be that top dude again. But you know, he could, he, he could sit there in the top 15, top 10 for a little bit. Two, three more years, maybe. Just give him Kevin Lee. I'd love to see that. You know, Kevin. Who else is Kevin Lee gonna fight next? He keeps calling these dudes out, calling shots, but I don't see him doing anything. I don't see him doing anything. He's getting tattoos instead. He's getting tattoos on his uh, head instead, of like a warrior gladiator. It looks stupid, but I mean, all I have to say is, if I'm Kevin Lee and I see that fight and I get offered Anthony Pettis, I'm like, ooh, that's a big name. People see that win and be like, ooh, move him up. And then he's on a two-fight win streak. Anthony Pettis sees that as, ooh, that's an opportunity to take his 11th spot. If I take his spot, I'm right back there. The way late weight is, it's so one-sided, so one-sided. Uh, I don't want to say one-sided, but it's so heavy. You know, I who knows who the champion is, if there even is a champion. Justin Gaethje, Dustin Poirier, Charles Oliveira now. Conor McGregor, Tony Ferguson, if you want to even call that dude a contender anymore. Dan Hooker, RDA is in it looking good at 155. Paul Felder's always there. Eli Quinton's always there. Kevin Lee, well, whatever. Uh, Islam Makashev. And don't forget, I, I don't know how he skipped this one over every time. Diego Ferreira is ranked number nine. Is ranked number nine at lightweight. What the heck? What in the world? That dude, that dude's ranked higher than Eli Quinton and Kevin Lee. And, you know, he ain't getting the respect he deserves. You know, let's, let's give this man a decent fight, you know. I don't really know who's going to be next for him, but I mean, hey. I guess let's run it. I guess, I don't know, give him somebody good. Dude wants to build a career. Let's get let's get, let's get this going, UFC. <clears throat> Excuse me. But no, there's a ton of form fights that for Anthony Pettis at 155. 
And I don't think he's done. I mean, I, I don't think that he's ever going to be great again. <coughs> but but he could definitely be that dude still. Um, I mean, like, if you look at his losses, this is since 2017, or since his fight against Dustin Poirier in 2017. Lost to Poirier, beat Michael Chiesa. He choked him out. That's a, that's a good win. Beat Michael Chiesa, even though it's at 55. That's a good win. Lost to Tony Ferguson. This one for Tony Ferguson was real. Then he beat Steven Thompson. So he, he beat Steven Thompson, man. Literally a year and a half ago. A little more than a year and a half. Then he lost to Nate Diaz. Absolute beast. And then he lost to Diego Ferreira. Underrated beast. Beat Cowboy. Beat Alex Morono. Give the dude, like, w- he's losing to these top dudes. He's not losing to these chumps. He's losing to these top dudes. His, like, if we're being honest, his worst loss since 2017 is Diego Ferreira, and he's ranked number nine. And we're talking about he's done? No, he's not done. Not even close. Moving on to the main card. Um, people might hate me for this. Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, how can I put this? You know, watching Greg Hardy fight, you know, Greg Hardy's obviously not the greatest person to ever walk this earth. But at the same time, you know, he knows what he did was wrong. Everybody knows what he did was wrong. Um, and I think that this stage, him being a UFC fighter is good for him because, you know, kind of starting off new in a way. And I just feel like he's a much better person than he was now. Or back then, excuse me. Um, his stint in UFC is really weird. You know, he's only lost... You no, know, he lost to March into Burr now. He lost to Alexander Volkov, and then he had, like, an illegal knee or something like that, and then he got DQ'd for one fight. So, like, it's been a weird UFC career, but he's beating dudes. Like, he, he's winning fights. He's winning fights. His his work on the ground is god-awful, but Greg Hardy will never be good on the ground. He just started way too late to ever be good on the ground. If you want to be good on the ground, you got to start as a kid. you got to start as a young, young adult. And if you if you start as a young adult, if I started right now, I would have to grind everything to be good. At this, um, so for Greg Hardy, you know, if, if a fight gets taken to the ground, especially against a vet like Marcin Tabera, it's it's all all bad for him. Like if you're in Greg Hardy's corner and you see him get taken down, you're like, all right, yep, just, just throw the towel, and he's not getting up for five minutes or however long left is left in the round, and you just gotta hope that you know he can when the fight starts, he won't gas, which he will, and he can land that shot. Um, one thing about Greg, he's not done. You know, keep keep Greg Hardy going. You know, I don't want to say he's a draw because he's not really, but but he's definitely a dude who you know, if somebody sees his name on a card, you know, hey, that dude played in the NFL, dude was a Pro Bowler defensive end. I'll watch this dude fight. Sure, you know, it might hate what he does. There's a lot of people who who like seeing him get beat up. I don't. I don't like. I don't have that much hatred toward the guy. I don't hate the guy at all. Actually, I mean, sure, like we we all know what he did was wrong, but. You know, are we going to, you know, call this out for the rest of his life? Like, no. Like, he messed up, fixed his mistakes, and here he is. He's in the UFC now. He's doing good. He's fighting these these dudes who are, are legit. Marcin Tabur is legit. He's got a four-fight four, four fight win streak at heavyweight, man. And he's, like, him being Greg Hardy, dude, he, his stock just went up a lot. Got back-to-back win. He got four in a row against Against Sergey Spivak, Maxim Grishin, Ben Rothwell, and Greg Hardy. Give this dude a top 15, top 10, 10 dude next. Martin Tabura never understood how, I never understood why he fell off so hard all of a sudden. Excuse me, this dude's main event in fight nights. And then all of a sudden he's just on the prelims, prelims. And I'm like, what is happening? What just happened? It's just the way the fight game is. A fight that did not expect to go this way. Shout out to my guy, my dude, Rob Font. Almost had him on the show, uh, s- scheduling mishaps. Hopefully we can re- revamp that one day. Rob Font, Marlon Marais. With all due respect to Rob Font, love the dude. Did not expect him to win this fight. Uh, I thought that, you know, Marlon Marais was just like too... It was just going to be too big and too too powerful, too quick. But man, Rob Font looked good, dude. He looked good, dude. Rob Font hits hard, dude. Hits powerful. And there's, like, this dude can be a problem at 135. If you're a 135-er, you do not want to see a contract with this dude's name coming on it. And honestly, the thing that sucks about it for me the most is I think the next fight he gets is going to be a five-rounder with Cody Garbrandt. And that is going to hurt. That's going to hurt me hard because I don't want to see either of these dudes lose, and that is a banger of a fight. 
the re the, him Rob Font versus Cody Garbrandt is a fight that if, if it like I, I think that's the fight to make next. I think that that's got to happen. It's got to happen. You know, Marlon Myers was ranked what three? Rob Font was eleven. Cody was four. You know, Cody will probably move up to three now. Uh, Rob Font will go to four. And boom, you you're you're right back there. You're right back in it. You know, match up to four versus three. Uh, let's pull up one thirty-five. You know, um, let's see, let's see. Oh wait, the rankings already out. Jeez, I'm an idiot. Yeah, R- Rob Font's up to up to number five. Frankie Edgar's up to four. Cody Garbrandt's up to up to one. Or excuse me, up to three. So now everything's everything's matching up perfectly for one thirty-five. Everything is perfect. Everything that's being done here, absolutely. Perfection. You've got, excuse me, if you've got Piotr Jan versus Aljamain Sterling coming up, that, that, that's for the title. Boom, that fight. Next, you got Corey Sanhagen versus Frankie Edgar coming up. If Frankie Edgar can win that fight, dude, he is on a tear. He's got a two fight win, should get 135. Shouldn't say tear, excuse me. With two with two wins over top five dudes, including Corey Sanhagen. That's, but I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, stylistic nightmare for Frankie Edgar in that fight. That fight's official if you guys don't know February 6th. But, of course, Sanhagen versus Frankie Edgar is a horrible matchup for Frankie Edgar. Sanhagen's going to mop the floor with him. So I think, you know, at that point, you know, you know, after that fight, you you have to give Sanhagen a title shot. Um, I, I shouldn't say you have to, but I, I feel like you, you could. Um, and then Rob Font and Cody Garbrandt, that's three and five. Match that up. And then we'll, we'll just move to the co-main event. We'll skip over, uh, we'll skip over Michelle Pereira, Cass Williams for now. Come in event. Jose Aldo called out TJ Dillashaw. Inject that into my veins, dude. Yes, 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 yes. That is the that is a perfect fight. If I I thought that Corey Sanhagen versus TJ Dillashaw would be the perfect fight. As soon as I saw that the Frankie Edgar and uh, Corey Sanhagen got announced, I was like, ugh. Okay, that's not happening because TJ Dillashaw wants to get back in that cage, a sap, a sap like Rocky, and. Uh, I think TJ Dillashaw versus Jose Aldo is a perfect fight because because if you're asking me, TJ Dillashaw for cheating, not fighting for two years, does not deserve a shot at his belt back ASAP. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you do not, you don't, you cheated, you you, you were too scared to lose your belt, so you did things that you know you're not supposed to do. You, you're you're not a champ. You're not. Now, if he comes back and wins that fight, he's a champ. Don't get me wrong. But I think he needs to win a fight before he can fight for the belt. And I think at this point, excuse me, I think him versus Jose Aldo, if he beats Jose Aldo, you know, that's a legend of the fight game. That's a five-round fight. TJ Dillashaw takes that to a decision, wins that fight. And TJ, then TJ, TJ fights for the belt next. Boom. Easy as that. Easy as that. Um, Jose Aldo looked good. It, it just looked like he was more powerful than Cheeto. And the, I think the fight IQ was just a lot, lot different, lot, lot, lot different. Um, I think that Jose Aldo was just—it's just a lot smarter than Marlon Vera. With all due respect, um, it was just a bad fight for for Cheeto Vera. I thought I thought he pulled it off. I thought that you know that Jose Aldo coming off what f- five months later from that beating he took to Jan. I thought I, I just didn't think that he'd be able to do it. But it's a it's a three round fight. Jose Aldo in a three round fight is f- insane. Uh, five round fight starts to starts to dwindle. Doesn't look good, but Jose Aldo looked great. Um, so I think that that really cements himself to be still considered a top dude at one thirty. That's his first win at top one thirty five. If he stays at that weight class, you know that dude can be a problem. Um, but if you put TJ Dillashaw in front of him, that's a win for TJ Dillashaw, and boom, he he just beat the greatest featherweight of all time, or the second greatest, Conor McGregor, second greatest, second greatest featherweight of all time. And that would be awesome for TJ. And then at that point, give TJ a title shot. And then if Jose wins, he's one of the top dudes. I still, he's still there. And I think that like it's one of the it's it's one of the greatest 135ers of all time going up against one of the greatest 145ers of all time at 135. And if you don't like that fight, then you're just not a a fight fan at that point. I I can't trust anything you say at that point. Um, I see a lot of people calling for the Cheeto Vera Sean O'Malley rematch. The only time I want to see a rematch is if it's the top five dudes. I don't want to see two number 15 dudes go at it again. Come on. Come on. Let's be better than that, UFC. Let's be better than that. Now, don't get me wrong. Love to see it. I think Sean O'Malley wins the next time, but 
what do I know? Moving on to the to Michelle Pereira, Cash Williams. Weird fight. Um, expected this to be banger, absolute banger of a fight. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't anything special. Um, if you know anything about me, you, you listen to this show. You know I do not like Michelle Pereira at all, at all, man. And I love Cass Williams from Detroit, thirty minutes away from me. So I was I was rooting for Chaos. I I'll be honest. I don't know how all three judges gave it the same. First round, eerie close. Second round, eerie close. Third round, uh, what was I saying? I forgot what it was. Oh yeah, a third round, eerie close. Um, how they all scored the same, weird to me. Thought that first round could have went to chaos. Um, thought the first, second round could have went to chaos. Third round definitely went to Michelle Pereira. Um, weird fight. Um, I, I don't even know what's next for Michelle Pereira, dude. Dude, so arrogant, so weird. Who wants to fight the dude? But whatever. Chaos Williams, you know, j- just feed that dude some some dudes he can beat up. Make that dude some performance bonus money. Dude's an animal. Love that guy. Main card. Or main event. Excuse me. When this fight started, and I, I saw them walking out, saw them doing the introductions, I, I, I saw the lines on, like, the, the board or on, like, the intro names, and I saw Jeff Neal was favorited over Steven Thompson. And I'm, like, I'm I'm sitting there. I'm, like, w- what? W- what? No way. No, no way. This has to be fake. The fact that Jeff Neal was favorited in a fight over Steven Thompson is disgraceful to the MMA community, and I cannot believe it happened. People don't understand that there are levels to this game. There's levels to this game that, I mean, if you would have told me a couple years ago, I, I probably wouldn't have understood either. But there's levels to this game, and Steven Thompson is one of, if not the most technical, perfectionate strikers the UFC has ever seen. And Jeff Neal is a uh, is a dude who, don't get me wrong, is a beast, but he's got that one-shot power. You know, he's going to knock you out. But Steven Thompson is so smart, and so his fight IQ is so high, his striking IQ. And I'm like, this dude is not going to get touched by Jeff Neal. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a great fight. Oh, it was 50-45 across the board, I agreed with that wholeheartedly. But the fact that I was just so lost, and I was like, what? Like, I can't believe this is actually being shown to me in front of my eyes. Um, S- Steven Thompson looked good, man. He he reiterated to himself that he's not, no, he's what, 37, 38, something like that? People thought he was done. He's not done, dude. Um, y- both of those fights against Woodley, you could have given to him. Uh, Anthony Pettis, l- love you, Anthony Pettis. Lucky, like, biggest fluke of 2019. Darren Till, a lot of people thought he won that fight. A lot of people thought he won that fight. And so, Stephen Thompson's lost four fights in his UFC career. And there are none of them that are, are, are legit. That are legit losses. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now, he, both times, he, he could have beat Woodley. He didn't, but you, know, you could have scored it for him, whatever. The shot against Anthony Pettis... He was winning that fight, got caught. I mean, sure, but whatever. Darren Till, a lot of people thought Darren Till, that, that, uh, that Wonder Boy won that fight. So, what I'm saying is, there, Steven Thompson is one of the most underrated dudes in, in the world at this weight class. It's, not even in the weight class, in the world. Um, next for him, it, it's such an interesting division. Um, you have Kamaru Usman, he's got to fight Gilbert Burns next. No ifs, ands, what's about it. Leon Edwards is fighting Hamza at Hype Train. And then and that leaves Kobe Covington, Jorge Masvidal, Steven Thompson, and Tyron Woodley up at the top. You're just like, what do I do? I think Kobe Covington and Jorge Masvidal need to fight. Um, if not, Jorge Masvidal and Steven Thompson are gonna run it back. Like there, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. You know, Jorge Masvidal's got fights right there. Have him pick one. Him for Steven Thompson is, you know, it, it it's a good fight. I'd love to see it. Steven Thompson wins that fight easy. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Jorge. Him versus Kobe Covington. Kobe Covington is going to wrestle him, wrestle kill him. And, you know, it's not a good fight for him. So Jorge Masvidal's in a pickle. Like, oh, like, I, I can either strike with a dude or just get absolutely pieced up by a dude. Um, so, but I, it's such a weird division because there's so much happening. And there's just, like, it's a lot. It's held up a lot by, by especially in the idea 
that Jorge Masvidal is kind of like a superstar now. He wants to he wants the cash. He wants the money, and um, he's he's being real stingy about his his uh, his negotiations. So really interesting to see what's going to happen. Um, I would love to see. Well, because no matter what happens, Kamara Usman versus Gilbert Burns is happening in what, February or something. They're saying, I don't know. Who knows when that fight's ever going to happen, if it ever happens. That fight's going to happen. And then after that, Colby Covington's the only one who deserves a shot. Like, at this point, Gil- Gilbert Burns is the only person at Walter Waite who deserves a shot at the belt at all in any facet of the game. Uh, Excuse me. So after that fight, Colby Covington's number one contender, whatever, whatnot. But then I think. How can I put this? I think Leon Edwards, if he beats Hamzat, he does not get it. He does not deserve a title shot, at least. Will they give it to him? Maybe. He does not deserve a title shot, though. So I think if Masvidal doesn't fight Thompson, Masvidal doesn't fight Colby, just do Masvidal versus Leon Edwards or Hamzat. Or do Stephen Thompson versus the winner of Gilbert Burn or of Leon Edwards and Hamzat Shmaev. That that's what you have to do. Boom. Bada bang, bada boom, UFC. I just solved all your problems. But boy, I know. I'm, eight, I'm an 18 year old kid with the best podcast in the world. Anyway, the thing that sucks now, the thing that sucks now, we've had a fight card every weekend since July 4th, and now we don't have fights until January 16th. What about that one? What about it? What about that? What are we going to do, boys? What are we going to do? Watch some NBA's back today. NBA starts back up today. I hate basketball. I ain't watching that. Uh, there's football coming up. Playoffs are about to start soon. College football playoff. Notre Dame got in. It should have been Texas a and or Coastal Carolina. Go Chanticleers. Um, but yeah, it's crazy. But the thing that's cool is when it does come back, we come back with a vengeance. A vengeance looking to go out there and just absolutely slay the world. Sorry, Mom. Can't talk. Absolutely slay the world. We've got... Ow. Jeez. January 16th, we've got Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. Straight up boxing match. No matter in any facet of form, straight up boxing match. Now, with all due respect to Calvin Cater, I love the dude. He's one of my favorite fighters at 145. He's going to get absolutely pieced up Brian Ortega, Max Holloway style. And it's not going to be a close fight. Max Holloway is, in my opinion, the best featherweight in the world. Um, Sure... Sure, he, in my opinion, he lost that first fight to Volkanovski. So that second fight, he won that fight. He should be the champ. The The scoring system's garbage, but what do I know? Who cares? Whatever. Um, Max Holloway's the best 145 in the world. Calvin Cater is just a is, is just a contender. And I think Holloway goes out there and just absolutely embarrasses him. I got fourth round TKO. Next, you got Leon Edwards, Hamzat Shemaev. I... I I, I'm not believing the hype train. The hype train. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. Boo me if you want. I'm not believing in the hype train of Hamzat Shemaev. I'm believing in the straight up fact that Leon Edwards is one of the most underrated, underappreciated dudes in the company, and he's gonna go out there and, and he's gonna win this fight. He's gonna win this fight easily, and people are gonna be like, "Wow, this dude is not legit." And Hamzat is gonna have to go back to Sweden and be like, "Oh, I am not legit. I cannot smash." And boom, bada bing, bada boom. You've got Leon Edwards now right back in contention, and I think you know he could make he, he could he could make a, a call for the title. Do I think he deserves it at that point? No, not at all. But you know he he's back in top contention. People just need to see him back back fighting. He doesn't call people out. He doesn't fight. He just he's kind of just there. It's annoying. It's annoying, Leon. Figure it out, bro. And then the main event, the Holy Grail, the the biggest pay per view of 2021 all already in January. We had Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. Um, I don't see this fight changing at all. It's a stylistic nightmare for Dustin. Everybody I've asked about, you know, whether it's Ally Quinta, uh, Matt Favola, and everybody I've asked has said the same thing. You know, Conor just hits too hard. Conor's too precise. Dustin's not going to know what to do. He's not going to knock Conor. No, he's not going to knock Conor out. I'm sorry. Sorry. I, Dustin, you're my second favorite fighter of all time. I love you, man, but it's just not going to happen. And Connor's gonna go out there, and he's just gonna hit him with the shot, and boom, bada bang, bada boom, he's gonna go down. Um, I say first round, may- maybe second round, if he does like an Eddie Alvarez style, just piece him up for the first round, then knocks him out in the second. But hey, what do I know? The UFC needs Connor back. They need they need him back. They need fans back. Like it sucks that this fight's gonna be on fight out without fans. 
Because the best part about Connor fights is the fans. You know, the fans go. My favorite, one of my favorite things to do is just rewatch that fight with Cowboy, and just listen. As soon as Herb Dean calls the fight, you just hear the crowd just erupt on a different level. People love the people love Conor McGregor. People want to see him lose. People want to see him win. I want to do want to see him win. If Khabib's gone, Conor McGregor is going to be the champion next year, 2021. Conor McGregor will be the champion of the lightweight division. Boom. That's all. That's all I have to say to that. If you don't believe me, you're a hater. What are some other things you want in the UFC? People are, are, there's a lot of talk about Tony Ferguson and whether he's done or not. Tony, you just got to accept it, buddy. Even Michael Bisping said it. You're done. You're done, kid. Um, next for Tony Ferguson, Anthony Pettis is calling him out. Don't know about that fight because I feel like that fight is a, I feel like Tony Ferguson ain't that done. But like, <laughs> but like, I don't know. I feel like Tony Ferguson would win that fight, and that's not what we're trying to see. We're trying to see if he's legit. Um, so get so feed him a Dan Hooker, you know. Feed him, you know. Feed him a Dan Hooker. Feed him a, a, a Diego Ferreira. Feed him somebody, somebody, somebody. Give this man one last fight, and if he can't prove he's, he's legit, he ain't legit. No ifs, ands, buts about it. UFC's looking good, man. It was a, it was a great year. For, it was a great year for the UFC, and I think next week because next week next Monday the twenty eighth, because there's no fights, I the, I'll just have to talk about news and stuff. Next next week is going to be the inaugural Underground Four Underground Knee MMA Show Awards. We're going to do awards such as Fight of the Year, uh, a Fighter of the Year, Knockout of the Year, Submission of the Year, Breakout Star of the Year. Coach of the year. Just stuff like that. Stuff like that. But I'm real pumped for it. Fights are done with for the year. Um, crazy, crazy year for the UFC, man. Um, they were the first ones back. And, and they did it, and they did it proud. You know, they, they've done every Like, sure, people got sick along the way, but, you know, the, the, Dana White did it. He took everybody to Fight Island. He made things happen. Dana White, shout out to you, man. Dana White made things happen. If you're a hater on it, then you're just a hater. What, what else can I say? Um... That's that's about all I got for today, man. Um, I'm trying to get some people on the show. Um, hopefully we can get some some uh, people, or probably not actually, because it's Christmas. Hope everybody has a merry merry Christmas. Um, or whatever holiday you celebrate. Um, hope everybody has a great holiday. Uh, stay safe and uh, be nice to each other. Hopefully Santa brings you all coal, cause you're all horrible people. But yeah, if you're if you listen to my podcast, I'll bring you a gift or two, cause you're pretty cool then. Um, everybody. Be nice to each other. Be good people, man. Oh, God, just be good people. Be a good person. Wake up and breed excellence like Andrew Downer. That's all the time we got for today. Peace out.